Hello, welcome. This is uh, week one of Military Studies 102, and I'm Colonel Peoples. We're going to be talking about leadership education today, uh, specifically preparing for leadership lab number two, which is uh, next week, January the 14th, here at Prescott High School. I am trying to uh, set up a talk to you today about uh, first aid, which will be uh, covered by the Emory Riddle Cadets who are coming to visit us uh, the 14th of December, 14th of the January next week. Um, so if we turn to leadership education, LE1, and we go to, uh, I think it's chapter three, lesson three is first aid. It's on page 169. And we'll be talking about first aid here. And again, we have some guest lecturers during the leadership lab next week from Emory Riddle. The Air Force ROTC cadets will come talk to you, uh, just like I mentioned. Uh, the basic objectives, which are right there on your Moodle JTED, talk about know how to prepare for a medical emergency and know what to do in a medical emergency. Uh, first aid is, is kind of basic to modern uh, day life. You'll, sometime in your life, you'll have to get or receive first aid because of accidents. I'm trying to uh, give you a heads up of uh, some of your motivation that might happen that even an accident like this on the picture here with the uh, person injuring themselves on a bike, <laughs> uh, you know, might require some first aid skills by your, by, uh, spontaneously by your friends or your family. Uh, and hopefully you'll be prepared to know what to do uh, for a medical emergency and, and uh, keep people safe until true professionals show up. Uh, we'll be going over what is first aid, uh, how do you prepare, uh, what are the precautions you take, uh, what are the four steps to take for most emergencies, and what are the common emergencies. We'll talk specifically about sprains and broken bones, uh, bugs, bug bites and stings, as well as, uh, you know, fainting and some other things that everybody's seen, gosh, out here in the West uh, with the dry climate, uh, a lot of no nosebleeds. We had one yesterday, actually. How exactly do you do these things? Heat-related illnesses, we all see those here in Arizona. Uh, shock, uh, choking, I don't know if everybody's ever seen anybody choking in a restaurant. What do you do in that type of situation? And of course, what is CPR? Cardiopulmonary resuscitation. Um, let's talk about what you would do in this situation. Uh, how many of you guys have actually seen a uh, car accident? It's not uncommon uh, nowadays. I think last time I looked up, what, 41,000 uh, people die each year in America uh, with car accidents. And I think the answer is like, seven times that are injured, you know, and require hospitalization. So think about the actions you take in order to provide help and, uh, and so that you, and, you know, what you would do uh, prior to taking them away. Um, for instance, uh, I uh, came upon a car accident when I was younger. Uh, it's obviously a turned over car. Uh, and actually it was during in a remote area of Pennsylvania and it was it was sad it was a convertible and uh, it looked like it was horrible a lot of injury uh, when the cars turned over you want to immediately safe the scene uh, make sure there's no other injuries get some people out there stop the traffic and then administer first aid to the individuals in order of preference as to whether they need it uh, bottom line is we Myself and some standby, uh, other standby people uh, came up and helped out and called 911. And the ambulance came and, and the people were saved with minimal injuries depending the, on how horrible it looked to begin with. First aid, what is first aid? Right here in your book. Uh, we talk about that based on page 169. Immediate temporary uh, care for an injured or ill person until they can uh, receive professional help. Uh, knowledge, uh, knowing first aid may 
help prevent further damage or speed recover, recovery or make the difference between life and death. How, do you, uh, prepare, how are you prepared for emergency? You need to know the first basic uh, skills for first aid. You have to have emergency numbers on hand, not only 911, but maybe poison uh, numbers. Location of the family health records, of course, how to get in touch with the individuals who are hurt as far as uh, whether or not they have any precautions like diabetes or, or former medical conditions or, or uh, medications they may be on. And, of course, keeping first aid supplies at home in your car and knowing how to use them. Basic first aid supplies, as you can see, uh, everybody could probably name those, everything from uh, here in the Arizona. <laughs> you need uh, tweezers to uh, take out, uh, you know, a cactus. Uh, cactus needles or glocids are the small needles. Uh, we see that every time we go orienteering <laughs> with our orienteering meet. Uh, we always need to use the tweezers to get out some uh, cactus needles. Um, bandages, face masks for sanitation. Uh, I just heard a beep. What was that? I hope that's my, my recording is still going. <laughs> I don't know if you guys heard that. Uh, okay, universal precautions. What do you do no matter uh, where you are to try to prevent the spread of disease? Is you want to uh, wear gloves if you have them, use a face mask or shield, especially in CPR situations, uh, uh, cover your open wounds on your body so that there's no blood transmitting, and of course wash your hands thoroughly uh, after, uh, ideally before first aid and after first aid. Uh, four steps to take care of most emergencies. Uh, this would be right there on your lesson objectives, uh, what to do in a medical emergency, how to prepare for them, recognize the signs for emergencies. The fact that you see someone in the, uh, this happened to me when I was about 17, I was working in a restaurant, somebody looked like that. Not passing in the air, sort of, you know, international sign for choking like this. Uh, and it was obvious they were choking, but they weren't just kidding. You know, they were, they were having a good time. The people around the table did not do anything and uh, actually, I was across the room uh, tending the salad bar, but uh, one of these smaller female waitresses came over and absolutely grabbed the individual and uh, did the Heimlich maneuver uh, behind their, their back and put the arms in front of their uh, sternum and pulled up and dislodged a, a steak, a piece of steak that the person had choked on and saved their life right there in front of them. Uh, she decided to act. She ended up calling for help afterwards and uh, providing care until they arrive. These are the common emergencies that you'll see all your life, right? Uh, sprains in basketball, happened the other day with my daughter in basketball game, uh, one of her friends. Bruises happens almost every day, depending on what you do. Broken bones are a little more serious. Insect bites can be serious, but, but are, are not as common here in Arizona, more common in the south or uh, Florida, uh, the southern states where there's more water, more humidity. Poisoning, maybe some younger siblings have got into the bad stuff and uh, actually drank the wrong stuff. I I've, I've have seen that happen. Nosebleed, like I said, that happens pretty common in Arizona with the dry, dry weather. Fainting, <laughs> we had a cadet uh, faint uh, during one of our assemblies, uh, not assemblies, uh, formations. I think it was during, uh, was it? I think it was Veterans Day, right out here by the flagpole. We had one of our fates get woozy and fall over. The other uh, cadets actually caught him and uh, took care of him, and, and we handled it no problem. A sprain, you turn your ankle. What do you do? Rice method. Probably need to know this, knock on wood. Rice is good. Rest, ice, compression, and evaluation. Rest, ice, compression and evaluation. That's right here in the uh, book. It's on page 172. It talks about a sprain as a condition in which the ligaments uh, that hold the joints are in position of, of stretch or torn. Usually ankles, but it can be a elbow. I've heard, I've heard of a sprained elbow with playing tennis uh, or a or neck injury sprain. Uh, but the main thing is to uh, reduce the symptoms as much as possible and minimize the future impact. Broken bones. 
let's see, an open fracture and a closed fracture. You should know the difference of those. The uh, closed fracture does not break the skin. The open fracture does uh, and uh, comes with one or two pieces of the bone coming through the skin. Uh, honestly, I have never seen an open fracture. I've seen a half dozen closed fracture broken bones. But the bottom line is pain and swelling and mis misshapen appearance. Uh, you stabilize people and then uh, get them to medical care. Uh, bites and stings. I guess here we can have uh, uh, rattlesnakes. I mean, snake bites. I've heard of that here. Or scorpions. We have scorpions actually in our old house. Uh, never bit us, but uh, has <laughs> did bite a family member. Uh, but you have, you know, you can have, uh, you know, shock if you panic. Uh, you can have a rash and difficulty breathing. Uh, but the idea is to uh, decrease this pain and swelling as much as possible around insect bites and, and stings. To uh, treat the bites, you wash the affected area, you uh, try to decrease the, the infection of it. Uh, treating stings, you move the stinger and apply ice pack so that it does not swell as much. Here's some good pictures of a, a uh, tick. Uh, ticks are, I guess ticks are not as common as, uh, it depends on, you cannot get a tick unless you go in the woods. In the uh, east, with a lot of vegetation, it's a lot more common probably than out here in the west. But uh, the tick burrows down into you, and uh, you want to pull it directly out and put uh, kill the tick immediately, of course, then tr clean your bite with a disinfectant so that uh, the, the breaking of your skin doesn't get infected. Burns. Um, how many of you guys have seen burns or had burns? Everything from a burn on a stove, which... <laughs> happened to one of my uh, children over Christmas break. Uh, you know, you got to touch the snow to make sure it's hot. Uh, but, uh, you know, that was a minor burn. Uh, but the treatment depends on how severe it is. Uh, you can obviously have uh, very severe burns if you're in a uh, car wreck or a house fire, for instance. I've seen those. But in the different bur burns, you can uh, see, I guess, let's see, by that definition, uh, I am on one of my family members had a first degree burn uh, during the Christmas break and uh, red skin, pain and swelling, sure did complain about it. <laughs> we put cold water on it and you know what else we did for our burn, it was not horrible, we have an aloe plant at home and aloe uh, helps out burns, it soothes it, makes it uh, cool. Secondary burn uh, affects your first and second layer of skin, uh, it causes blister and actually, you know what, you can get a secondary burn. I've seen a secondary burn. I've had a secondary burn because of uh, sunburn. Uh, not putting on your lotion, not covering up outside, and going out and getting a secondary burn and having blisters. Uh, you don't want the blisters to pop and get infected. And it was pretty painful. It was about the worst I've ever had. Third degree burn is when you affect muscle and bone. It's, uh, you know, again, associated with a trauma, uh, not necessarily sunburn or, or just a little uh, uh, heat injury during cooking. Uh, but this is third degree burn is uh, mainly for trauma and require uh, severe medical help, uh, making sure you keep the victims still and providing fluids because they will get dehydrated. Um, chance of infection is horrible here. This is one of the main thing, things to uh, work with with the third degree burns. Um, uh, let's see, yeah, there you go, top of page 178, they actually talk about the different types of the burns that we just went through, uh, first, second, and third degree burns. Okay, poisoning, how do you deal with poisoning? Uh, call us near, nearest poison control center, 911 will certainly work, it save you some time if you had that listed around your phone at your house, uh, you follow the instructions by the center. You, uh, I mean, a lot of the poisons, you don't want them to throw it up because it burns going down and guess what? It'll burn coming up. So uh, some of the poisons, they simply allow you to take something else to neutralize the poison in your body. <coughs> Excuse me. How about foreign object in the eye? We've all had this. Uh, 
piece of sand or uh, something unusual. You don't want to rub it. You want to flush it out with water. I've had that happen in the last year. You know, gone uh, down to the beach and the wind's blowing. I get a lot of stuff in my eye. You, you want to rub it, but then that causes problems with your eyes. So you just flush it with water. Uh, someone else's eye actually had a bug in a family member's eye in the last year. Um, and that was uh, really fun uh, with trying to get the water out. But we, that second statement right there talked about removing a floating object with cotton swab or clean cloth. That's exactly what we did. By the way, all this noise in the background is the basketball team. We're, our studio is right by the uh, boys' gym. Nosebleed. We've done this. Oh wow, you hear the noise there? That's good. I mean, let me move this closer so you can hear me instead of the uh, the band. Pinching the nose shirt, short, pins, <laughs> pinching the nose shut, and uh, getting medical assistance if the bleeding uh, continues. We probably have this in our our classroom with our PE about once a month, literally, and we've never had it go uh, longer than five or ten minutes. Fainting, fainting. We can, uh, if you feel faint, you lay down. Uh, this happens two or three times a year with all our PE and maybe with our activities outside. Raise the legs and uh, loose the loosen the loose the clothing and keep everything going with that. Checking the airway. Uh, this they always come back. We send them to the nurse. They lie down. They recover. Heat-related cramps. This is when you're maybe hiking the Grand Canyon and you get dehydrated. Uh, you have to somehow get cool and, uh, and, and uh, relax uh, because a lot of times the heavy exercise in the hot weather will wear you out and give you cramps. Uh, making sure you drink cold water, not ice, but cooler water, trying to decrease your, your internal core temperature. Uh, it's right there on page 175. You see some pictures of that, the difference between a heat cramp and heat exhaustion. Um, exhaustion is when you can start to actually uh, have permanent problems. Maybe you, you can die from this. You can have rapid heartbeats if you do not calm down. Heat stroke, most serious, serious form. This is when you can actually die. And uh, this has happened. This happens in Arizona probably every year. Uh, my wife was hiking the Grand Canyon and actually uh, had a friend go into a heat stroke and uh, they did save her, uh, but they got her cool and calmed down and she got out of the canyon okay. Severe emergencies, only minutes to live. You got to keep your calm and keep your eyes together, your, your act together with all your friends and call for help. Choking, I mentioned this. International form of choking. Oh, I'm choking. <laughs> Can I do that enough? Uh, turning reddish purple, I've seen that. Bur bulging eyes, I've seen that. Inability to speak, I've seen that. Uh, you need to do abdominal thrusts like I talked about. Wrapping from behind. Putting your hands together. Putting your thumb right up underneath your abdominal and pulling up. You can actually uh, make a fist. Quickly inward and upward. Repeated thrust until the food is dislodged. If they call them unresponsive, you go to CPR. If you're choking, uh, I have heard of this, I've never seen this happen. Uh, they talk about, actually, if you're choking, trying to, to do the same thing, you're cho choking and actually going against a chair and, and putting that same pressure on your body to allow it to come on a chair or a side of a table. I have heard of that, I've never seen it. Lean over a firm object and press the abdominal the abdomen in it. Shock, shock. This is when you tend to panic and your vital organs start to shut down because of a lack of oxygen. Uh, you can have main injury like a third degree burn we talked about, uh, severe heat. We talked about the exhaustion in the Grand Canyon. I have, uh, my wife saw that. Uh, heart attack, that used to happen a little more when I was younger. Butt shock is when you're cool and clammy or cold and it's hot outside, uh, weak or rapid pulse rate, and then sort of a weak, uh, confused, anxious situation. That's what my wife saw in the Grand Canyon in the heat exhaustion. The, the, her friend did not know what was going on. 
But the main thing is lie them down, keep them still, don't let them hurt themselves again, don't, don't let them make the situation worse, and uh, try to, to calm them uh, and keep them warm. The last one there, a roll on the side, and uh, if the vomiting has occurred, I've seen that actually when I, as I was a child, about 12 years old, I saw a person drown. And uh, they absolutely, the person was drowning and they ended up vomiting, but they, they did die, unfortunately. Um, severe bleeding, lie them down. Raise the bleeding heart, bleeding sight above your heart. If I'm bleeding from here, raise it above your heart. Okay, apply direct pressure. Arm pressure, there's your artery. If it's bleeding down here on your thing, well then you're gonna be cutting off the bleeding here and actually I can feel my heart beat right here with my thumb underneath here. Cut it off. Leg, same, same way. It's uh, right below the groin area is where the main artery coming down and you may need to use two hands to do that. Okay, CPR, cardiopulmonary resuscitation. Uh, I, I'm qualified for that. I have to be as a junior ROTC instructor and I hope that a lot of my cadets are. We used to teach it. Matter of fact, we might, might be good to bring that in and teach it again. But the bottom line, if you, the CPR is that if the person loses consciousness, then it uh, combines, uh, this actually is a slide is wrong. Uh, nowadays, the new way of CPR does not combine rescue breaths. You do not breathe into their mouth anymore. You simply do chest compressions. So, uh, if you ever hear of CPR, I gotta breathe in this person's mouth, that's not what they do anymore. They simply do uh, chest compressions. First thing is the, you're hoping the person is going to be breathing, so you check their airway, you look inside their mouth, you gently tilt their head back so they get a straight, uh, straight um, airway, and then you worry about the circulation. You look for, uh, look by seeing if they can begin chest compressions. And again, nowadays you do not breathe in. You do not do what this says, the rescue breaths. You simply do chest compressions. Push their hands on their chest and you do 15 um, compressions at 100 uh, per minute. And I mean it's fast. It's a one and a two and a three. One, two, three. One, two, three. This is quick. It's really quick for your, your compressions. And uh, you do not give the rescue breaths that they're talking about. Uh, you simply want to keep their heart breathing, uh, beating and, and uh, they're trying to create their circulation of their blood until other people get there. Okay, going around the review, uh, we want to talk about the uh, two objectives, knowing how to prepare for a medical emergency and knowing what to do in a medical emergency, how to prepare. Uh, we've been through that as far as getting first aid training, having supplies at home, uh, having emergency numbers, and then what to do in, the emergency, in a medical uh, emergency is, uh, you know, recognizes the signs, deciding to act, calling for help, and uh, providing care until the, the uh, help arrives. That's the basic uh, gist of this whole uh, lesson. Uh, this is the end of the first aid lesson, which is chapter three, lesson three, and uh, we'll actually have on-site uh, personnel and hands-on training, this leadership lab too. So uh, this concludes it, and please go online now and